So today we're going to talk about some world events leading up to World War II. And here in the pictures you can see uh, the peace conference uh, finishing up at Versailles. Uh, Hitler comes to power. Uh, Benito Mussolini comes to power in 1921. Uh, Tojo comes to power in Japan in 1931. And here are a couple of pictures of Pearl Harbor. So... Treaty of Versailles humiliates Germany, led to Hitler. Basically, Germany did not start World War One, but they were they had to admit that they did start World War One, and they had to pay back 33 billion dollars in reparations, which equivocates to 2.7 to 2.9 trillion dollars in today's money. Some other weaknesses of this treaty we've talked about it left the Soviets out, and they fought on the right side. Russia fought on the right side of the war, but they were not invited to this treaty, uh, this peace treaty. Britain and France broke Europe up to serve their own interest. Remember, Britain and France had run European affairs for a thousand years. So they felt like they had the right to do this. And um, basically, they wanted to humiliate and weaken Germany as well. So what comes out of this? We have fascist and totalitarian uh, nations and states emerge. And Britain and France, because they were so weak and uh, broke from World War One, they have to appease uh, these aggressors. That means giving in to an aggressor for a promised peace. It was very much like um, uh, giving in to a bully. So uh, you have to ask yourself, was the world made a safe place? Uh, remember, President Wilson actually does predict there will be a second world war because of the Treaty of Versailles. And um, he said the world was not a safe place for for uh, peace and um, democracy. So uh, let's see what else. There was something else I was going to say about this, and I can't remember it off the top of my head. So I'm going to move on. So fascism is authoritarian government in which the good of the state outweighs the good of the individual. Totalitarian is a uh, totalitarianism is a government in which one person has complete control over all of their citizens' lives. Socialism is a government which controls all aspects of a citizen's life. So, uh, going back quickly, you can link fascism to Italy, totalitarianism to the Soviet Union under Stalin, and socialism you can link to Hitler. Benito Mussolini, Benito Mussolini came to power in Italy in 1921, and... Uh, Basically, the economy was state-controlled. He, he departmentalized his government, and it was known as the corporate state. So, um, departmentalizing meaning he had, like, I think it was seven major departments that handled everything in Italian society. Uh, one of his uh, credos was, believe, obey, and fight. He wanted women. He called on women to win the battle of motherhood. He, he promoted... Uh, like 10 to 15 uh, children homes because half of those kids, you know, ha or most of those kids had a half halfway chance of being a, a boy and then they could serve as warriors in his military. He was trying to build up his ranks through birth. Uh, he does invade Ethiopia in 1935, one of two African nations to not uh, be imperialized through the age of imperialism, and he was trying to change that. Joseph Stalin, he came to power in 1927 in the Soviet Union by forcing out his rival, um, Leon Trotsky, and he had him hunted down for 13 years and killed in Mexico City in 1940. So uh, he's a very vengeful guy, um, very, uh, very much a, a very evil guy. Um, when you talk about murders and, and killings, you could put him up there with Hitler. Uh, he killed at least 25 million of his own people. Hitler, he killed about 20 to 30 million people himself. So, Joseph Stalin, though, he introduces a command economy uh, to uh, the Soviets, which the government controls prices, the government controls wages, and the government would control production goals. Now, think about this in comparison to the Americans economy of free enterprise where uh, who controls prices consumers who controls wages 
uh, consumers and who controls production goals. Consumers. How do consumers do this? Remember, um, consumers are the ones buying goods. So anyway, uh, this economy under Stalin, and he had a five-year plan where he'd go back and adjust this stuff every five years, these three things. Uh, and this was the economic system of the Soviet Union until 1991. Um, anyway, all government control. He is the one. This is why Russians love him. Uh, and it's a love-hate relationship with them, but this is why they love him, because he is the one who industrialized the Soviet Union. He's the one that took them from farming into um, factories, and they're going to thrive throughout the 1930s. There's only a couple of nations that actually do well in the 1930s, and Soviet Union is one, simply because nobody was trading with them in the first place anyway, so they were building and industrializing while everybody else was suffering. So, he is a paranoid bordering on schizophrenic person personality and um, he believes that there are generals in his military and colonels and uh, officers that wanted to take his power so he set up these show trials and had them executed he kills off two-thirds of his military leadership by 1938 and um, so the Soviet Union will be weak as far as leadership leading into World War II because he's killed off two-thirds of his military leadership which by the way most of them didn't have any inkling of any aspiration of taking his power he just thought they did so he is so weak militarily by 1939 and Hitler basically has a lot of power Hitler's gonna be one of the strongest nations uh, in the world in 1939 Stalin knowing this and Stalin not wanting to fight against Hitler signs this non-aggression pact with Hitler. Adolf Hitler comes to power in 1933 and he, he uh, obtained from the depressed economic situation basically a he's a charismatic speaker. If you listen to him you don't even have to understand exactly what he's saying. He, he is a rousing speaker. He writes this book called Mein Kampf while he's in prison in 1925 and it outlines Nazism. It basically blueprints everything, volumes one and two. Uh, it blueprints everything he's going to do as a leader. So if you wanted to know what Hitler was going to do, all you had to do is read his book. Um, it even outlined killing um, all the minority groups, including Jews. He built up his military throughout the 1930s, uh, starting in 33. And he basically, for being the bad person that he's known as, he also needs to be remembered for it. He got Germany out of a depression and became one of the strongest nations within two years economically. Now, how he did that was he broke the Treaty of Versailles and he said it's nothing but a piece of paper unless it's enforced. And he's absolutely right about that. The next country we're going to talk about here is Japan. The Great Depression hurt Japan. Socialists take over and then two years later the military is going to take over. Um... They, they resented the U.S. for shutting out the Japanese immigrants. Young military leaders are going to revolt, and in 1931, they're going to take over, and then they invade Manchuria. Basically, what they did is said that uh, the Japanese railroad line was bombed. They bombed their own railroad line. Uh, the Japanese Air Force did. The Japanese blamed the Chinese, and they invaded uh, China and took over Manchuria, the northern part of China. So this policy of appeasement, what we have here, basically is giving in to an aggressor. Hitler broke uh, treaties a number of times, and instead of fighting Hitler, uh, Britain and France gave in to him and said, okay, you can have this land, but next time uh, we're going to war, and then he'd take land, and they'd say, next time, next time, and so they gave in to him. It starts in 1936 when he, take, he took traditional... Uh, German land back, the Rhineland. Then he's going to occupy Austria without a shot. He takes over this nation in 1938. September 1938, he's given the Sudetenland because he suggested that Germans were being persecuted uh, in the Sudetenland and what is Czechoslovakia, which was not true. But that leads to the Munich Conference where British Prime Minister Chamberlain says we have peace in our time. And basically, the leader of Britain, the leader of France, and Hitler sat in a conference room 
in Munich, and the Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia sat outside on a bench waiting to hear what these three nations decided. And basically Hitler got his way and they give him part of Czechoslovakia, the Sudetenland, while the Prime Minister sat outside. So, as you see here, August of 1939, the Non-Aggression Pact was signed with Stalin, and then September 1st, the Blitzkrieg starts in Poland, where Stalin and Hitler agreed to divide up Poland. Britain and France could not do any more. They declared war September 1st, 1939. World War II starts in 1939. There's uh, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, which, by the way, Winston Churchill was at this uh, speech, and he said it was a disgrace. So, moving on. There's World War II starting. FDR, how do we handle this? Uh, Central American policy. He, he practices the good neighbor policy for Central America. Non-interventionalist non and helps uh, Latin American countries grow closer to us. The, um, the NYE committee basically suggested that uh, World War I was influenced by arms companies making money off of World War I, so they wanted to prolong it and do you know, keep it going and all that good stuff. So Congress passes a series of neutrality acts. 1939, we're not going to sell any arms to warring nations. 1936, we're not going to loan any money to uh, warring nations. 1937, however, we uh, Roosevelt's able to get Congress to turn its path a little, and we offer cash and carry and other goods and weapons to nations fighting uh, Hitler and some of these other um aggressive nations. Uh, it's important to note that FDR hated the neutrality acts. He was he saw what was coming as early as 1936 and he worked to get us ready for World War II behind the scenes. 1939 we authorized cash and carry of weapons. 1940 we uh, lend destroyers to Britain for bases. Uh, in 1941 put a star by these. These are important. The Lend-Lease Act we're going to lend weapons to Britain and other nations fighting Germany and um, basically get them back. Why are we doing this? Because Britain in 1941 is completely bankrupt. We bankroll Britain throughout World War II. And they're, bank, they're bankrupt in 1941, so we have to lend them money. We write the Atlantic Charter with Britain. It outlines our goals for World War II. The destroyer Reuben James is attacked by Germany, but we're still not going to enter World War II. Here's what the Atlantic Charter outlines. You need to know these. Uh, it should look familiar to you. It should look very much like Wilson's 14 points because it's based off of Wilson's 14 points. It's the Declaration of Principles authorized by Churchill and FDR becomes the basis for our United Nations today. And uh, 26 nations are going to sign this uh, this uh, charter. And the reason it's called the Atlantic Charter, they meet out in the middle the middle of it, the Atlantic on U.S. and British ships. Uh, as you see, seek no land gains, pursue no territorial changes without the consent of the people. Uh, Self determination to respect the right of the people to choose their own government. There, we want to promote free trade, encourage international cooperation, disarm. The aggressors and build a secure peace for the future based on freedom from want or fear freedom of the seas and we are going to establish permanent system of general security number eight is the um un so japan and america as you see here japan continues to attack china 1937 uh, 1938-39 while well, we pass embargoes on them cordell hall uh, encourages U.S. businesses to stop sending Japan supplies, um, including aircraft, fuel, plane parts. 1939, the U.S. terminated the 1911 Commercial Treaty with Japan, which would enable the U.S. to enact restrictions. 1940, Japanese-U.S. relations were basically day-to-day. -day. Uh, 1940, July 2nd, the Export Control Act is passed, which cut off export of aircraft parts chemicals to japan japan was invading um indochina french indochina which is um uh, like vietnam laos cambodia 